Hello, in this video I'll be showing how you can easily edit a photo in Photoshop from the start to the very end. And in this we're going to be learning how to process your raw images in Photoshop or in Camera Raw. And later on proceed to Photoshop to do the color grading and skin retouching. So, if you find the video helpful, simply like the video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So now to edit this very image, as soon as open a raw image in Photoshop, it is going to automatically open up the Camera Raw filter. So right here we just want to correct the lighting and contrast issues regarding this very image. So we shall simply come and drop the highlights down to recover information within the sky. And we shall do the same for the whites just like that. And you can see the blue sky is now popping in this case. So I'll take the blacks down and open up the shadows of this very image to get more detail in the background. So I'll add some contrast to the image around. I feel like 11 is fine. Then I'll slightly warm up the image to around 5,000. 400 kelvins so let's go with five six hundred is okay and after warming it up slightly i'll come down to my color mixer and under color mixer i'll simply play around with this color so i just want the blue sky to pop so I'll first of all come the luminous and take down the luminous of the blue slightly to around negative 40 and i'll do the same for the saturation slightly to around 13 and as you can see that makes the image look better so to make the blues pop even more we are going to be handling that later on so I'll just come the hues and play around with the hues of the blues slightly so i'll make the blues a little bit towards the aquas by moving this towards the left hand side to add a tiny bit of teal look and i'll play around with the greens to make the greens slightly pop by making them towards uh, the aqua side so just doing that, you can see the image is now different from where we started. So we, ju we just want to make the blues pop. So we're just going to come to the calibration panel and just come to the blue primary. So by taking up the blue primary slider, you can see the blues are going to be popping. But it's as well going to be affecting other tones in the image. So this is a trick to make the image pop. So don't mind if at all it is looking oversaturated in this case. So we shall come back up right here to our vibrance or the saturation slider and slightly take down the saturation of the image around negative, negative 7. So this is the before, after, before, after. So after doing this, we're just going to come and open the image in Photoshop by clicking on open in order to open the image into Photoshop first to do the next adjustments. So in Photoshop, what we want to do, we just want to edit the image using frequency separation and as usual we are going to come to the background layer and duplicate it by pressing ctrl j or you can use command j so press ctrl j or command j twice then double click on that layer name it to low frequency and you can double click on this one and you can name it the high frequency or the texture layer so just come to the low frequency layer select it turn off the high frequency layer and they're going to come right here to filter blur and come to gaussian blur then you're going to take the radius down all the way and click on an area that has more skin details and come the radius slider and start blurring away the details on the skin. So we have to stop at the point whereby the details on the skin are just starting to disappear. So three is okay. I'll click okay. Then come the high frequency layer now, activate it. Then you're going to come to image, apply image. Then come under layer, select the low frequency layer channel is RGB, blending has to be, so we are editing a 16-bit image, the blending has to be add, the scale is to offset 0, and make sure you turn on the invert option. So in case you're editing an 8-bit image, the settings are going to be different. So for an 8-bit image, after selecting the low frequency layer, channel RGB, the blending has to be subtract, the scale is to offset 128, and invert is not turned on. So ours is 16-bit, so we are just going to revert these settings to 16-bit settings. So I'll invert, click OK, change the blend mode from normal and change it all the way down to linear light. Select both layers, then press Ctrl G or you can use Command G. Open up the group and select the low frequency layer. And after turning off the high frequency layer, we shall come to the brushes, right click and get the Mr. Brush tool. And after setting the Mr. Brush tool, or selecting it we are simply going to come and measure it is clean brush and measure the second option that says clean brush after each stroke is selected with the weight of nine percent load 75 
Mixed 90 flat 100 percent. Make sure sample alias is not turned on or is not checked. So what is left? We just want to blend the tones on the image. So I'll slightly zoom in the image by using Control Plus. We can use Command Plus. Reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard and start blending the skin so that you can create smooth skin for our subject in this case. So I'll just blend the tones right there on hatching and by just blending so to blend you simply left click and hold down and you drag the brush in a given direction to create even skin tone or to smoothen the skin so just take your time blend the mid tones along the highlights alone and the shadows alone and to increase or reduce on the size of the brush you can use the open and close bracket keys on the keyboard to play around with different sizes of the brush so I'll just be doing this for the rest of the image, just like that. So like I said, you have to keep on playing around with different sizes of the brush so that you can work on a given area depending on the tones or the colors that are belonging in that particular or specific area. So you're going to come to other areas. Make sure you blend every area that has or contains skin tones or skin color so that no area is going to be left unsmoothed or unsmoothened so i'm just going to be doing this for the rest of her skin and by just doing this you can see that the skin is getting to look smooth than where we started so I'll reduce on the size and continue working so for the fingers just use a very small brush and to play around with different sizes of the mixer brush tool, we are using the open and close square bracket keys on the keyboard. And as you're seeing, I'm not zooming all the way in when I'm trying to retouch. It's because I want to see every area that has or contains uneven skin tone transitions. So I'll just come and turn on the texture or high frequency layer. And as soon as I do that, you can see or notice that the skin has been smoothened and the model skin looks smooth. So it's a before, after, before, after. So after doing this, we are simply going to come to the high frequency and select it. Zoom in by using Ctrl plus or you can use Command plus on the keyboard. So after zooming in, we are simply going to come and remember this area hasn't been brushed or blended. So use a small brush and simply blend that area to create some little bit of smoothening. So after blending, it is time to remove pimples or blemishes. So select the high frequency layer and come and get the clone stamp tool. Or you can press S on the keyboard and make sure the hardness of the clone stamp tool is set to 0, mode is normal, opacity and the flat 100%, align this check and the sample is set to current layer. So to remove a pimple, zoom all the in by using Ctrl plus or you can use Command plus on the keyboard. So to remove this pimple, we have to sample a clean area that is near the pimple. But make sure that the size of the clone stamp tool is big enough to cover the pimple or the blemish that you want to remove. So to remove a pimple, hold down the option key on the keyboard. Or you can hold down the alternate key on the keyboard. Option and left click on a clean area and release the option key on the keyboard and left click once again over the pimple to cover it or to replace the pimple with clean skin basically. So that is what I'm going to be doing for this small pimples on the skin because skin retouching can't be complete if the blemishes are left within the image so simple blemish removal and you're going to be getting a perfect image at the end of the process so right now we are done doing the skin retouching and next we just want to do the final color grading of the skin tone so this is a before after before after for the skin retouching so right now we just want to work on the skin tones or the colors so we're just going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing shift option command e on the keyboard then for windows to shift alternate control e on the keyboard create a stamp visible layer and come to select and come to subject so that photoshop can automatically select the subject for us and it has done a pretty nice job. And after that, simply come to the new layer icon and create an empty layer. Change the, the empty layer blend mode from normal to color. 
then come under the brushes right right click and get the normal brush tool and make sure the settings the hardness is set to zero then make sure the mode is normal or percent the flat hundred percent so we just want to sample color on the model skin so we're just going to sample a color so i'll just hold down the option on the keyboard and left click to sample a color that i want the rest of the model skin to look like so option and left click on a color that i feel like the rest of the model skin should look like and after sampling that color remember we have selected on the empty layer that we change the blend mode to color so i'll just come and paint roughly don't mind if at all the color is looking odd because we are always going to correct that in this very tutorial so i'll just quickly paint on the model skin so i'll paint when i've zoomed out so that i can do a very fast job but don't mind if i told you make a mistake during the painting process because we can always come back and correct those errors so just look at how the skin tones are getting to look perfect so i'll reduce on the size of the brush by using the box bracket keys on the keyboard so the box bracket keys are going to reduce or increase on the size of the brush or particular tools within your Photoshop so after that I'm just going to quickly paint so you have to make sure or ensure that every area that has skin has been painted and you don't want to leave out some areas of the model or subject skin so reduce on the size and paint on those areas so in case one correct some areas like the nails or other areas where you have messed out or painted accidentally i'll show you a technique that you can use to correct or rectify those particular areas so i've painted on majority of the areas on her skin so just come the eraser tool or you can press e on the keyboard to select the eraser tool and with the eraser tool make sure the mode is set to brush or pass in the flat hundred percent you can now come using the eraser tool remember the eraser tool its work is to erase like we do in fine art so i'm just going to be doing this and reveal back the initial or original color of her out outfit in that particular or specific area and also come on this area of the dress to reveal her initial color of the dress so come to the nails and also reveal her original color of the nails so I'll come to the shoe right here and try to paint on the straps to reveal or bring back the original color in that area so come to the ear so I'll get the brush once again and paint on her ear just like that so that it is not left out so after doing this remember the effect may sometimes look a little bit too much or overdone so press ctrl d or you can press command d on the keyboard to deselect active selection then come to the opacity right here and take down the opacity until when you feel like the skin tone is looking nice to your liking but when you feel like the skin is looking a little bit too orange still this is what you have to do come and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer come to master and make sure you select the reds and slightly take down the reds to reduce on the amount of oranges within the skin tone of the subject or you can even create a black and white adjustment layer change the blend mode from rather change the blend mode of the black and white adjustment layer from normal to multiply and reduce on the opacity so that it can add a little bit of contrast to her skin so just one play around with the blacks of the image we are going to create a selective color adjustment layer and come and target the blacks and come to YC science and take up the sun slider to make it look a little bit more cinematic i feel like her skin tone is leaning more on the orange side so I'll just come back to our hue and saturation double click on this icon and target the reds and darken that a little bit more i feel like this is okay so after doing this you can even plan with the blues in the sky so create another selective color adjustment layer and target the blues in this case so you can target the blues or the cyan 
and play around with these sliders to see what works best for so i'll just take the cyan slider higher and take the blacks just down to see what works best for us so i'll just take it higher to mute or darken the blues in the sky so after we have done this let's do a little bit of eye whitening so you're just going to come and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer come to master dimension master selected and take down the saturation around negative 77 then press ctrl i or you can use command i on the keyboard so with the brush tool selected make sure you have black and white on these two color swatches so in case you have any other random color apart from black and red you can reset by pressing d on the keyboard or you can click on these tiny swatches so with white as a foreground color you can switch between black and white by using the arrow key or you can use x on the keyboard so white is the foreground color you're just going to zoom in by using Ctrl plus or you can use command plus on the keyboard reduce on the size of the brush and simply paint on the white area of the eye don't paint on what shouldn't be white in the eye so i've painted in the eyes so command minus or Ctrl minus to zoom out so this is our image right now so let's see where we started in photoshop before after before after so the image looks great you can even take the image to be even better by adding skin glow or skin shine to her skin so to do that we are simply going to come and create a stamp visible here first of all shift alternate ctrl e for windows then for mark this shift option command e on the keyboard create a stamp visible layer and after creating it just come to adjustments create a curves adjustment layer then come to this slider and take it all the way up and even when you feel like the highlights on the skin are popping then after doing that double click on this layer icon to open up the layer style dialog box you can simply right click then come to where you see blend if make sure it is set to gray then come to where you see underlying layer and take the effect from affecting the overall image until when only the highlights on the skin are being affected just like that so to make this blend better into the skin hold down the option key on the, on the keyboard or you can hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and click to blend the effect into the skin but it's as well affecting the rest of the image so select the white layer mask and press ctrl i or you can use command i on the keyboard to invert so with the brush tool selected we are simply going to paint on only the highlights of the model skin so just like that and this is going to make the image even look better by adding a little bit of glow or skin shine but sometimes this can look a little bit overdone so come the opacity and take down the opacity so that it can blend in the image and it can look better and a little bit more natural so let's see the overall before and after for this very image this is the image initially before after before after so after this the next thing is going to be simply cleaning up this area of the image so i'm just going to come to the stamp visible layer that we created get the spot healing brush tool and simply paint over this reflector right down here so just like that and photoshop is going to try to remove it so by just doing that next we just want to save the image come to file export and come to export as and it's going to open up the export as dialog box right here in photoshop make sure the format of the image is set to jpeg quite it to the maximum which is seven for this case make sure the resample is set to by cubic sharper and also scroll down and make sure the color space is set to convert to srgb and embed color profile make sure the two are checked and simply click on export in order to save our image and click on save so this is how you can edit a photo in photoshop from the start to the very end and if i totally have enjoyed this video don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe in case you have enjoyed and loved this very video ronix from ronix photography thank for watching and see you more videos on this channel don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.